By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at a classic battle in old school magic. Merfolk versus goblins and my opponent is playing with the goblins and we've decided to include fallen empires for the obvious reasons that fallen empires offers so many cool merfolk and so many cool uh, um, goblin cards we just thought we have to include it now i do understand that that means that opens up goblin grenades so i'm a little bit nervous on the other hand man i'm playing blue i'm playing control i've got counter spells i'm all good now before i go um to the deck techs uh, I would first like to mention that you can also skip that as always and you can do that by going to the uh, check in the description below and there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. Now my opponent today is Robert by the way. He's from the Netherlands. I don't think I've mentioned that and he is bringing like I said before a mono colored mono colored red goblin deck to the table and it's um it's looking mighty scary. You know what? Why don't we just start the deck deck with that deck? Let's look at the Robert's Goblins. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Robert. And um, well, it is pretty straightforward, but that probably means it's pretty good. It's got four Goblin Digging Team, four Goblins of the Flark, four Goblin Balloon Brigades. That means 12 one drop Goblins. So it's pretty sure that he has a one drop turn one, two one ones in turn two, and then probably turn three, if everything works, he's going to play a Goblin King and I'm going to enter a world of pain. On top of that, he's also playing with four Mishra's Factories. They're very good in an aggressive strategy because later in you can just use them as creatures as well. And early in the game, you can use them to drop your spells, right? So it's um, it's even more pressure basically with, uh, with Mishra's Factories, even more creatures. And of course, that combination of and having creature threats and playing with red means you also have a lot of burn. So the burn spells here, man. I mean, look at that. Four bolts, four chains, two fireballs. That means 10 spells that can deal direct damage here. And of course, the four goblin grenades. They're just so, so powerful. One to cast, you know, one red to cast. Sacrifice a goblin. And then it can deal five damage to any target. So basically what you want to do with a deck like this is just get out of, out of the gates as aggressive as you possibly can try to put in, I don't know, eight points of combat damage, that's usually already enough, and then just finish it with Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Fireball, or, or of course the Goblin Grenades. It's not that difficult. Um, the thing is with these decks, you tend to run out of fuel at a certain point. So for me, playing against this deck, and I've got, of course, a quick aggressive deck as well, but in this matchup, I feel like I'm kind of the control player. So I've got to try to survive the first couple of turns and then try to control the board because you know with for example my three four surrender Befreed, it's a really big beefy flyer i should be able to kind of hold him back and hopefully deal some damage with that myself as well the problem here is of course talking about the specific surrender Befreed, is it deals damage to me too so that way i'm kind of partly doing the job that you know my opponent robert is doing robert is not interested in um you know control in this game he's just the aggro player he wants to kill me as fast as he can and um yeah we're going to look at my deck in a moment and, and, and normally i would also be the control player but like i said i kind of feel like in this matchup uh, you know in, b because he has access to so much direct damage it's going to be kind of tough for me with with my merfolk blue list but um you know this is the deck here we see the sideboard on the right side by the way it's got two blood moons that are not going to do much against me he does have of course red elemental blast so i'm going to see a blue blast red elemental blast fight in the future between us there are two cards in this sideboard that i'd like to point out that's called goblin surgeon it's an o2 creature for one red and it reads sacrifice a goblin to regenerate target goblin for zero so that means it can basically sacrifice itself to save a goblin for example goblin king which is also a summon lord but also being eradicated to a summon goblin as well so he can sack the goblin surgeon to save a goblin king or sack any other goblin to do that so goblin surgeon actually not that bad um and then you've got goblin flotilla that's a card i really like love the art of this one uh one red and two and it actually has island walk and that can be relevant because i'm playing mono blue so it's, i'm looking forward to see that card from the sideboard coming in if it comes in i assume it does so that's really a card i'm looking forward to see in action so this is the deck of robert pretty straightforward looking very very strong now let's take a look at my deck 
And here you see my deck. So I guess it's kind of a Merfolk deck, right? Playing four Lord of Atlantis and four River Merfolk. So Lord of Atlantis obviously beefs up all the other Merfolks, in this case, the River Merfolks, giving them plus one, plus one. And the cool thing about River Merfolk, it's a card I really like. I love the flavor of the card. It's a two, one for two blue. And for one blue, I can give it Mountain Walk. And maybe you're thinking, what, why, why can it have Mountain Walk? It's got a fish tail. Come on, be serious. Well, if you read the flavor text, you find out because uh, the flavor text is all about him being in rivers in the mountainside. So th those are his favorite places to live. He lives in the mountains, but then he lives in the rivers. So it kind of makes sense that he's got Mountain Walk. And then with Lord of Atlantis, you can also give him Island Walk as well. But that Mountain Walk, of course, is going to be relevant in this matchup. And then instead of Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, I've just decided to go for Flying Man. I think the thing is, if you if you um, count on your Lord of Atlantis is too much, it's just going to be a disappointment. Because basically, I'm, I've, I'm just expecting them to get killed. They get killed against basically any deck when you play them out. So I'm sure a deck with four chains and four bolts is going to be able to just kill them on the spot. So I don't have high hopes for my Lord of Atlantis, but who knows, maybe once one sticks and, and, and pumps the River Merfolk, that would be good. Or, or each other, of course, they can pump each other as well. Um, so there are basically two strategies, right? I've got the Merfolk pack of eight, and they also have eight flying creatures. So the four flying man and the four surrounded by freets. Now, my worry with this deck is that there are a lot of cards that basically hurt me, uh, which, is, which is, of course, known, um, you know, the Suicide Blues strategy. Um, I've got flying, uh, sorry, I've got Surrender Pafrit that's going to hurt me during my upkeep one point of damage. I also have four Psyblasts that are going to hurt me for two points of damage. I think my best bet is really just to first, I have to take some damage in. There's no other way. And then as the game progresses to turn four or turn five, I have to try to kind of switch the game so that I take control and then maybe Robert's running out of gas and I can kind of win it from there. Um, you know, I kind of feel I've got some answers. I'm playing AO Pile, which is really nice. Two to cast, one in sack, two damage to any target. So, I mean, I've got a lot of ways as well to kind of kill the, the, uh, the Goblin Kings of Robert, right? Um, I'm playing Counterspell. Now, Counterspell is kind of a tricky card in this matchup because Counter Magic is not good when you're behind, right? It's just not great. Uh, when you're behind, you're kind of forced to tap out in your turn, play out creatures to block or, you know, play out spells to destroy the creatures of your opponent. And you don't really have time to keep two blue open for counter magic. So again, I'm kind of hoping, you know, at the start of the game, I would just kind of play out all my creatures, you know, probably play some direct damage, trying to kind of control, get the control of the game. And then once I have control of the game, hopefully I can keep two blue open to or play a boomerang or play a counter spell, right? Because boomerang is basically kind of a counter spell as well, but can also be quite annoying in all sorts of other ways. So, um, yeah, this is my deck. I'm also playing with four factories, by the way. I guess it's kind of a no-brainer with these type of decks. So, um, yeah, this is what I have. We've seen what Robert has. So let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. So we're seeing my cards. And that the screen is flickering a little bit. We actually played this on Discord. I don't know if you've ever played on Discord, but it is a little bit annoying with those green things there, but whatever we can still see the screens he's playing a goblin digging team one one you can tap and sack it to destroy target wall and i'm playing a lord of atlantis so so far it's looking pretty good i'm expecting two one drops now from robert okay first a bolt makes sense attacking for one gonna drop to 19 here and passing turn so with 12 one drops i was expecting another one drop for robert so i guess it's kind of good for me that there's not an extra pressure and playing a Mishra's Factory, another Lord of Atlantis. And there's a quick lightning bolt on that one as well. And I kind of wonder now when I'm looking back at this, should I've played that other Lord of Atlantis, not knowing what's in my uh, hand, of course. Attacking now with the Goblin Digging Team, becoming a 2-2 because of the Goblin Lord, the Goblin King, I should say. And there's an AO Pile and Passing Turn. So not using the AO pile straight away on the Goblin King, playing land number four. And showing him my hand, the amount of cards I have in hand. Let's see what he's going to do. Attacking with both, I'm taking four damage. Now maybe you're wondering why am I not using the AO pile? Well, that reason is simple. I wanna keep my two blue open to possibly counter another goblin. Um, then at the end step, I decide to use uh, my AO pile. That did mean that I had to take, you know, obviously two extra points of damage, or actually three extra points of damage. So it's kind of a decision that you make. 
Ooh, there's a fireball. Now at least I can counter this fireball. Okay, that's something. Keeping my surrender up alive here. I guess I can attack him now. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Going for the aggro move. Also attacking here with the Mistress Factory. So 2-2 two, two and a 3-4. 5 damage for Robert here. Gonna drop to 15. Things are kind of looking okay-ish for me. Um, let's see what else he can do. There's another Goblin Digging Team. So that's not really a big threat. I wonder if he's gonna attack now. Or if he's gonna choose to keep his two Digging Teams at bay. Possibly using those two to kill my factory. He has gonna attack. That kind of makes sense. Ooh, Bloodlust! Wow, that means five more damage for me. That is very painful. Also taking a damage from my own surrender. Now I'm on six. So two bolts and I'm dead. Oh wow, this is gonna be this is gonna be close. I need to attack with the surrender, right? I'm I'm a little bit in the tank here, trying to find trying to decide what's best. Deciding to only attack with one. That means he's on 12. The reason I'm not attacking with both is that I don't want to take two damage, go to four, and take a damage from my surrender, go to three, and then he can bolt me. So he's, he's attacking with both. I'm going to activate the factory. In response, he's going to shatter, going to take two damage. If he's got a bloodlust, it's done. And oh, there's a chain. No counter spell. Is there a counter spell? Cyblast. Okay, I'm killing myself, basically. Oh, man. And this shows. I mean, how deadly uh, Robert's deck is, right? Because it was looking to go my way. I didn't even take it that much damage, but even that was enough to kind of kill me. So it's it's so hard to play against a deck like this. Now we're both going to go to our sideboards. I'm probably going to board in my blue elemental blasts and Robert's going to board in his red elemental blasts. And then we shuffle up again. I'm hoping to see the flotillas, by the way, Robert, but we'll just, we'll have to see. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to, Sideboard, and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. I'm one game down. Let's see if I can change this. And, oh, no lands. Yeah, we're doing Gentleman Mulligan. So that means if you have no lands or only lands, um, you can actually take a free hand. Thinking about it in hindsight, actually, thinking like when you play certain decks, you've got less lands, right? So kind of, I guess that rule is in your favor. But... Anyway, it doesn't matter much. doesn't matter much. It's all good fun. This is just kitchen table fun. And basically, you don't want to play against, you know, somebody that's got no lands. It's no fun. So he's going to shuffle up. And I really think that I'm going to have an even harder time um, in the second game. Um, because he now has Red Elemental Blast. And I realize I've got Blue Elemental Blast. But... There's just so much I've got to take care of. And then he's got even more like answers. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So he's drawing a fresh seven. And let's have a look if he's going to keep or not. And it looks like he's going to keep starting with an island past turn here. And he's starting with a mountain. And there's an iron claw orcs. And there is a quick counter. Blue Elemental Blast. I'm trying to kind of keep the, the pressure off. That's kind of my, my one goal here. There's another Goblins of the Flark. And using a counter spell on that one. Okay, and we see only one land here from Robert, by the way. Hopefully I can find a creature. That would be really nice. Like a Surrender for free to put some pressure on. I guess I, I guess I can't find it. Passing another Goblin of the Flark and a Soul Ring pass turn. Playing blue, tapping two blue for a Lord of Atlantis past turn. I mean, I need put I need to put pressure on, you know. And now I've got no counter spells left. Use them on the goblins earlier in the game. There's a goblin flotilla. Really cool to see that one. 2-2 two, two Island Walker from Fallen Empires. And that's actually unblockable against my deck. So that's a big problem. And then now I'm kind of regretting that early red elemental blast. Or sorry, blue elemental blast. There's another blue elemental blast. Okay, that's just kind of good. Taking care of Goblin Flotilla and playing a river merfolk. So 2-1 and for one blue I can give it mountain walk and I can uh, attack. I wonder if it's going to attack if I'm going to trade. Not quite sure what to do. Ooh, red elemental blast. Okay, so I guess I don't even have to think about it. Attacking me for one, gonna drop to 18. So I guess the good news is that I'm still on 18, which is pretty high. And I've got two cards in hand. 
Robert's got four in hand though. There's a strip mine. He's gonna attack. I'm gonna go to 17. I wonder what cards I have in hand. I'm just passing turn here. This is not great. Am I just drawing lands? Is that it? Am I land flooded? There is a Goblin Balloon Brigade. There is a strip mine. I'm gonna strip one of his mountains, the untapped one. He's gonna use it. One red floating. Okay, he's just gonna let that one go. Attacking for two. I'm gonna drop to 14 here. He's got four cards in hand. I've got three cards in hand. We're kind of using our dice to kind of indicate how many cards we've got in hand. Attacking for two, I'm going to drop to 12. I mean, this is just not going great. Okay, Surrender Pafrit, that's something. Ah, oh, Red Elemental Blast. It's just not good. It's just not good. I mean, I, I feel like Robert is giving me an opening and I'm just not taking it. You know, I really wonder what those two cards in my hand are. Or maybe they're just two more lands, right? Or maybe it's a Psionic Blast. You don't want to play a Psy Blast on a 1-1, one -one, but I kind of feel forced right now. Attacking both, playing that Jam Day Tome. That's going to be even more trouble for me. Three cards in hand, having to pass. This is painful. I mean, if I've got the Psy Blast, I might as well just play it. Obviously, I'm waiting for him to play another Bloodlust, for example, and, and, and then in response play a Psy Blast, but... It's just not going to happen here. I'm on six. AO pile. Okay, that's pretty good. That's something. But remember, yeah, Ensep is going to activate his tome. Oh, man, I'm in trouble. I kind of... I, this is pretty frustrating to look back at because I feel like I had options. Um, um, the, the start wasn't as aggressive from Robert as one would expect. Oh, man, that's it. That's it. That's it. So I'm actually trying something here. I'm trying to boomerang... Um, the uh, Goblins of the Flark, but the thing is, and this is what Robert explained to me, that um, sacrificing the creature is part of the casting cost, so there's actually nothing you can do about it. So uh, that's it, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh man, this is pretty frustrating. <laughs> anyway, uh, we did play game number three, so if you want to stick around, uh, yeah, stick around to enjoy game three. And of course, Robert, man, congratulations. So I guess now we're gonna gonna dive into game three. Let's see if I have more, well, not luck, but yeah, luck and, and, and making the right decisions, I guess. Whatever. I'm just going to shuffle up and we're going to head to game number three. Game number three. So let's see if I can at least get one game win in. I kind of feel, I mean, my deck's not that bad, right? Or am I missing something? Obviously, the goblins are strong, though. Anyway, starting with Goblin Balloon Brigade, responding with a blue elemental blast and passing turn again. You know, you can go you can go in different strategies with the blue elemental blast. For example, I could have also chosen to keep it and say I'm gonna take a damage and then maybe I can protect my Lord of Atlantis. I'm not sure if I have it in hand, by the way, a lord. I don't know. Okay, I guess I do. Okay, so I got River Murfo, kind of the same idea. Um, let me know in the comments below, because now I'm using it quite aggressively. Okay, and here I'm protecting my River Murfolk, but there's a second chain. I mean, there's just so much removal coming my way from Robert. He's just got so many answers. It, ah, oh man. It is, it's disheartening. Do you say it that way? It's, it's, it's really difficult. Uh, he's playing Soul Ring here. Um, of course, I've played the Factory, so I can block on the Factory, but he's also playing with Shatters, of course, but I guess I just have to take that risk. Let's first see if he's going to attack. Maybe he decides not to, doesn't want to bluff a shatter or maybe this is part of the bluff that he's thinking i mean you know there are several reasons for him to actually attack and say you know what i'm going to trade one 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 for example maybe he's got a bloodlust he can pump the other one and and deal five damage or he can use it to, to kill my factory anyway he's going to attack so let's see what he's going to do so he's got a shatter okay shattered has gone taking two damage and uh that's it and playing okay playing a river merfolk and a mishra's factory so at least i mean at least i get some creatures on the floor and still on 16. it would be really nice to at least attack with the river merfolk with the mountain walk ability that is the dream i've got one in hand let's see what he's going to do and he's going to attack with both i'm going to animate the factory and block in response he's going to bolt and I'm going to take damage here. I'm going to go down to 14. I've got two in hand. And I'm going to take care of one of the mountains. 
Oh yeah, check it with River Merfolk. Yes, yes, this is what I wanted to do. Now I can lose this game, it's fine. I mean, I want to win the game, don't get me wrong, but at least I got to hit him with the River Merfolk. And uh, two cards in hand. The problem is I'm, I'm just too far behind already. I guess I keep swinging in. I'm not sure if that's the right decision to make here. I'm on 12. He's going to now put me to at least 10. If he can find a Bloodlust, it's going to be even, uh, even more damage. Okay, finding another Goblin here. And I mean, I've got to keep the River Merfolk untapped and then just trade it for a 1-1, which is something I don't want to do, but I, I have to. The problem is, like right now, I'm not, I guess I'm not drawing into any gas. I just need creatures, and that's a big difference here. Uh, I guess Robert is finding his, his goblins here, playing with more creatures as well than, uh, than uh, myself, and he's got more answers to my creatures. Look at that red elemental blast on my river merfolk. Oh, man. Oh, that's tough. Okay, at least I can I can boomerang, take it back, and I'm gonna go to eight. Oh yeah, we had we had quite a nice uh, a little little discussion um, um, here. Again, an interesting rule scenario. Um, he attacked, and then I declared blockers. And after my declaring of blockers, um, he cast that red elemental blast. So that kind of means that it's already. Um, it already counts as a block, so that attacking creature doesn't deal any damage anymore. If he would have played the Red Elemental Blast before uh, blockers were declared, he could have still done the damage. Anyway, it's always kind of interesting to have these moments and kind of together figure it out. And that's the way that, that Robert and myself did it. It wasn't like, I'm right, you're wrong, or you're wrong, or I'm right. No, it's more like, oh, interesting, let's go and figure that out and kind of learn from each other. Uh, as you play the game. Anyway, getting back to the game, <laughs> I'm getting absolutely slaughtered here. Fireball, killing my poor River Merfolk that I've protected so well. Oh man, that's it. Okay, at least I can counter it. Uh, but then he loses the Goblin, right? No, I don't know. I don't. Let me know in the comments. I don't know how this works. Anyway, I'm getting slaughtered to bits and to pieces here. I am absolutely dead. Look at that. They're just... The problem here is, and that really shows after sideboarding, I think the first game, and that's something that, that, that Robert and myself analyzed as well when we kind of talked about this matchup, we said like the first game was the most interesting and just, you know, Goblins already has more answers in this particular matchup and having all those answers plus the Red Elemental Blast as four extra answers, despite the fact that I boarded my four Blue Blasts, of course, but that's just gonna make it's just gonna make things even even better for the goblin deck so the goblin deck just keep kept getting you know a uh, uh, better and better and better and better uh, as we see our sideboard choices uh by the way so let's just take a look at uh robert's deck so robert man thank you for bringing this uh, this killer goblin brew uh to the channel and actually we played another game against another real cool uh deck and i'm definitely going to make an episode out of that but that's something for the future so if you want to see that match as well keep an eye on the channel i can say it's a really really spicy brew by robert with lord of the pits right i believe it can take lord of the pits so it was really a fun match but that's something for next time talking about next time uh if you want to stay updated on everything we do here on timmy talks make sure you hit that subscribe button and also smash that bell button both of these actions are completely free and are really helping me helping timmy talks grow as a channel there are two other things you can do that are completely three uh, uh sorry not uh, <laughs> completely free with an f um and that's leaving a comment in the comment section that really helps spam that comment section with your good vibes man i appreciate it and another thing you can do is hit that like button that really helps a lot it tells the youtube algorithm that you appreciate the content that I make. And I guess there's one other thing you can do that's free, of course, is share this on your socials. So if you've liked this matchup, share it on your socials, pass along the message already. Thank you if you're already doing that. So thank you for your support. Then you can also become a patron of the show, just like Robert. And it's quite easy, already starts with just $1. There's probably a link popping up right now, an info card. Click on that info card that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And um, there you can see how you can support the channel. The cool thing is if you support the channel, um, you get a channel pin, you get access to Discord, um, you know, depending on, on the tier of support, you can also make an episode with me. So if you've got a certain deck that you want to showcase on Timmy Talks, you know, through Patreon is a really good option. And you can join the Timmy Talks tournament. So every two months or so, I organize special Timmy Talks events 
to thank my patrons and channel members for their support because without their support this channel wouldn't be here so to thank them i organize special um special tournaments now if you want to join these tournaments simply join the timmy talks patreon it's as easy as that um talking about these patrons let's go and take a look at who they actually are let's go to the end scroll and take a look at the wonderful fantastic amazing patrons and channel members of timmy talks Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.